There's a lot of Scooby content out there, especially the TV shows. Makes sense considering the character got his start in TV, but how would I rank each series as a huge Scooby-Doo fan? What do I consider the best and the worst? Well, for starters, I'll put the original's Where Are You series high up on a pedestal. Nowadays, most people seem very dismissive towards it due to his age, but I think there's definitely a lot to admire. The wonderful artwork, the characters you know and love, those incredibly cheesy chase songs. Yeah, it's simple, but what's wrong with that? It will never get old to me. Second, I'll put it in a pup named Scooby-Doo, my favorite of the baby vacation trend in the late 80s, early 90s. Take the original Scooby format with a dash of Looney Tunes and Tex Avery and add just a hint of Ralph Bakshi's Mighty Mouse for good measure. Just by that alone, I'm hooked. The humor, the animation, the exaggerated characters, all top notch in my book. There's even a bully character named Red Herring. That's just genius. Besides the original, this was one of the Scooby-Doo shows I watched the most growing up. Third would be Mystery Incorporated. I don't think this is a perfect show, but it's still pretty damn good. It's the darkest of all the Scooby shows, and it really delivers. Some stuff I'm actually surprised they got away with. I love some of the monster designs, and the villains are great, especially Professor Pericles, voiced by Udo Kier. The teenage romance drama is a little annoying, and I'm not gonna lie, it does get in the way. But some of the other drama like Fred's relationship with his adoptive father, who's the mayor, is really well done. Also, the storyline in season 2 gets a little too complicated. Am I the only one that feels that way? I remember being in high school when the show first came out, and I really loved it then. And I love it now. I just don't go crazy over it like everybody else does. But it's one hell of a great series, and Dark Scooby-Doo at its best. Fourth would be Be Cool Scooby-Doo, the funniest of the franchise. Like a lot of people, I was turned off by the art style, but I sat and watched it for myself, and from the very first episode, the show was hilarious. This is some great writing. I'm glad to see more people giving it a chance now, because when it aired, it got really poor treatment from Cartoon Network and Boomerang. Also, it has my second favorite Daphne, next to her Zombie Island version. And it's such a goofball, you could tell Great Alao loves hamming it up when voicing her. I love female characters who can be just as wacky and goofy as males. There's a ton of scenes I laugh hard at, especially when they do a twist on a classic Scooby and Shaggy trick a monster cliche. Cool Scooby Doo is hilarious, and I definitely recommend seeing it if you haven't already. And now, this message. Today's video is brought to you by Audible. Audible allows you to listen to audiobooks and podcasts on any device, whether it be a smartphone, iPad, or tablet, and it picks up right where you left off, with thousands of titles to choose from. Right now, the book I'm listening to is I'm Glad My Mother Died by former iCarly star Jeanette McCurdy. It's an interesting and very heartbreaking read, and it really is an eye-opener when it comes to kid actors, to manage their parents, and Hollywood. I definitely recommend it. Sign up for a 30 day free trial and your first audiobook is covered. Go to audible.com slash cartoon guy. Again, that's audible.com slash cartoon guy. Now, back to the show. Coming in at number 5, 13 Ghosts of Scooby Doo, the most creative series from the Hanna Barbera era. A first in the franchise, the gang encounters actual monsters. Though it will be ruined in a director video follow up. The show is my first introduction to horror legend Vincent Price. And it had a lot of great ideas. It's a shame it was canceled so early. Really would love to see a genuine follow up. My pick for number 6, What's New Scooby Doo? I remember when this was first announced in 2002. I was so excited to see it, but for some reason I don't think I ever caught an episode on Kids WB. I watched Kids WB mind you, but I don't know what happened, maybe I always missed it. But I do remember watching it when it aired on Cartoon Cartoon Fridays in 2003. It does a great job of bringing these classic characters to the 21st century. And the modern rock chase scenes and references to early 2000s culture is a fun time capsule. Most notably, it has the best Scooby-Doo theme by Simple Plan and the last series to feature the great Casey Kasem as Shaggy. I'm glad they were able to get him back for the show. Number 7, The Scooby-Doo Show. A decent revival of Where Are You with some memorable monsters. I love the addition of Scooby Dum and some new gags with Scooby and Shaggy. It gets noticeably rougher and cheaper during the last season though. Number 8, The New Scooby Doo Movies. I liked it as a kid, I'm indifferent to it now. 
I think the episodes run a little too long. Some can be a bit boring. There's a few episodes I like. The Batman and Robin and the Cardinal Globetrotters episodes are classics. And I love the crossover with Josie and the Pussycats. And you can't go wrong with that Adams Family episode. And give the show credit, I wouldn't know who Don Knotts, Phyllis Diller, Mama Cass, and Don Adams were if it wasn't for the show. Number 9, The Scrappy Seasons. It's funny because I don't hate Scrappy like everyone else. I do think his intro season is pretty weak. You're basically watching the Scooby-Doo show, but with Scrappy in it. The only episode I like is the opener, The Blue Scabbard Lives. The idea is pretty creative. On the surface, Scrappy was his most annoying in this season, but people forget he gets more likable over time. The season where Fred, Daphne, Velma, and the mystery solving aspects were dropped and just featured Shaggy and the dogs getting into trouble, they're fine time wasters, I guess. I never care for the Yabadoo segments, though. The last season, the all-new Scooby and Scrappy show would later become the new Scooby-Doo Mysteries. It was a good return to the mystery format, with Daphne being the leader, a nice change of pace. Velma and Fred made sporadic appearances during the new Mysteries, and some of these were the first Scooby-Doo cartoons to use digital ink and paint. Some of my favorites during this season would be Happy Birthday Scooby-Doo and The Nutcracker School. Number 10, Scooby-Doo and Guess Who. Guess Who is one of the weaker modern Scooby shows. It should be good, but something about it feels off. I feel like they missed opportunities with some of the guests. I remember being so excited to see the Steve Urkel episode, and especially the Hex Girls episode, but they just feel underwhelming. Some of the dialogue is a bit awkward too. That's why we're here. We're solving that mystery. Because we're mystery solvers. This is great. We're both groups of teenage mystery solvers. We should work together. It'll be fun. And we can solve the mystery in half the time. What do you guys say? Want to solve this mystery together? I really wanted to love this show, but it left me feeling cold. Coming in at number 11, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo get a clue. I saw this show a week after its original airing and saw some more episodes until I decided not to bother anymore. Some of you might remember one of my earlier vids for my old Scooby Palooza series when I gave it a negative review, but I had no idea the show had a ton of defenders. After watching it again, no, it's still not good, but it's not as bad as I was playing it up. I applaud the team for trying something different though, but I don't think Scooby Doo works as a spy comedy. And Shaggy and Scooby being less comedic and bumbling and more competent just doesn't feel right. The villain Dr. Fives is probably the best thing the show has going for it. Now at the bottom of the barrel, we have the new series Velma. Out of all the Scooby-Doo shows, this has to be the absolute worst. And even if the show has to finish airing, I don't think my mind would change either way. It's a celebrity vanity project. A celebrity who clearly has some issues to work out. Every other line from this incarnation of Velma is self-deprecating or obnoxious know-it-all snark. Dragging the Scooby-Doo characters in this when they could have created their own characters is unforgivable. But then again, would we even be talking about it if it was an original show? I hate what they do with these characters, especially Shaggy or Norville, simply for someone who doesn't even respect him. Daphne is a mean girl, Fred is a spoiled rich white guy who they repeatedly make jokes about his tiny dong. Yay body positivity I guess. One thing it has going for it is the art style and the animation nerd divisions. I'm serious, it's really well done. I like this cast and once in a while I get a chuckle. For HBO Max to proudly brag about it being the number one animated show on the streaming service even when they got rid of half of their animated program is such a slap in the face too. Piss off. Like I said, it doesn't ruin Scooby or the franchise to me. I personally don't like it. Well, that's my ranking of all the Scooby shows. What's yours? What shows you like and which one you despise? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, I'm 47 Cartoon Guy, and I gotta fly. Oh, Scooby if you want to support this series and many other videos, click the link below to my Patreon. You get a special credit, early access, shout out to your channel or blog, even a commission by me. Every dollar goes into the production of these videos for software, research, DVDs, as well as help put food on the table. If you're not able to donate, you can also help by liking, commenting, subscribing, and clicking the little bell icon. I thank you, and I gotta fly.